Hi there, YouTube. This week's Kingdom song is perhaps one of the most cultish songs I've ever heard. And that's saying something. Even the title makes me feel just a little nauseated. It's called Loyally Submitting to Theocratic Order, and it first appeared in 1984 as song number 8. In 2009, it was song number 125, and in 2017, it is number 123. Well, let's get started. As So the point of this whole verse is supposed to be that Jehovah's Witnesses are expected to be in lockstep, obeying the theocratic order as commanded by the Watchtower Society. They don't even really try to beat around the bush here. It's just, obey. <laughs> there are several things about this verse that I find pretty interesting, though. First, why did they choose the word sound in the first line? I mean, there are plenty of other one-syllable words that would have made more sense and been a little less confusing here, because if you dissect this sentence it becomes pretty clear that sound is really not the verb they should have been looking for. Preach would have been more accurate and more clear. The word truths is also suspect, obviously because there is zero proof for any of the things they've been saying for the past hundred years, and also because truths is not an easy word to sing. Many, if not most of the things that they've been preaching and still preach are demonstrably false. Do you need examples of that? Here's a short list of a few of the lies they've told. Armageddon was supposed to come in 1914, 1915, 1918, 1925, 1975, and so on and so on and so forth. Then there's plenty more where that came from. Just do a Google search. That ought to keep you in reading material for a while. Priceless worth is also kind of dippy in my opinion. Because priceless is already a descriptor of worth, so saying priceless worth is redundant. But then, we know, witnesses positively adore redundancy. But here's the most interesting part of this whole verse to me. The phrases remain united and loyalty display carry special meaning if you're a witness. For one thing, they are very, very proud of their unity. That is, the fact that they supposedly study the same magazines every week all over the world in every congregation and discuss the same subjects in the public talks. Unity to them means not diverging from the party line, ever, for any purpose. Unity to them means unquestioning obedience to Watchtower leadership regardless of personal cost. Now, I've talked about the witness concept of loyalty before in other videos, but if you're tuning in to me for the first time, hi, um, here's a brief recap for you. Loyalty, or firm and constant support or allegiance, another trigger word, is a very important concept to the witnesses, but the loyalty they tout and drone on incessantly about is loyalty to the organization. Now, they brand and sell it as loyalty to Jehovah, but everything is carefully couched in such a way that it's clear to believers that the organization is God's mouthpiece on earth, and basically Jehovah and the Watchtower are one and the same. Jehovah's Witnesses are heavily conditioned to be loyal to the organization above all else, including their spouse, their children, their friends, their employer, their government, everyone. Their, themselves, everyone. With that in mind, let's talk about the phrase, loyalty display. To display is to make a prominent exhibition of something in a place where it can be easily seen. So a display is basically a performance or a show. So they're telling Jehovah's Witnesses here to make a spectacle of their loyalty to the organization, which many of them take very seriously. Case in point, when I was disfellowshipped and I still lived in the small town where I grew up, I would run into people that I had known all my life in the mall or at the grocery store, and upon seeing me just because there was an announcement made at a Thursday night meeting, when they saw me, some of them would be so very ostentatious about turning their backs, turning away, acting as if I were completely invisible or else just a piece of trash. Now, at first, this was very painful, as it was no doubt intended to be. But after a while, it started to be kind of funny. 
And eventually it became out and out hilarious because I didn't change. I was still the same person, exact same person. Now, even though the witnesses have studied in countless watchtowers, countless times about the Pharisees who were judged exactly for making ostentatious displays of their religion, witnesses don't seem to be able to make the connection that they are doing the exact same thing, that they are every bit as hypocritical. Anyway, let's move on. There were no substantial changes to this verse from 1984 to 2009. Just the words of such and in the second line was changed to and its. So, not substantial. There were no changes at all between 2009 and 2017. And the chorus is likewise the same. Hasn't been changed since the beginning in 1984. I'll be honest with you, this gives me the creeps. I mean, just listen to this crazy. Loyalty equals submission? On what planet? In what universe? Look, here's an example for you. I have a lot of personal loyalty to my husband. I adore that man, and I will support him until the bitter end, but that does not mean that I am in any way obligated to be submissive, because I'm not. And if I were, I would wager a guess that he would be less than pleased. Loyalty and submission do not automatically go together, people. This is nuts. They're saying that we owe submission to the Watchtower Society and that being loyal to God means submitting to the rules of a corporation. That is insane. The next thing I find bothersome about this is the incomplete thought at, at the end of the first line. What or whom are we recognizing? Why? So according to this song, we owe God loyal submission in recognition of something, but to owe something implies obligation. It implies a transaction, a quid pro quo, something changing hands, or a moral obligation. So, so what's wrong with this? Well, you can't really expect to be bound by a transaction that you did not at least tacitly agree to. This owing of submission for whatever reason, it's the same logic that causes a certain type of man to get all bent out of shape if he takes a woman to dinner and she doesn't have sex with him afterward. Whatever we're supposed to be recognizing in this song does not entitle the Watchtower Society to absolute submission. Just no. Okay, so let's go to the next line. He gives protection. From what? He doesn't protect children from pedophiles in the congregation. He doesn't protect elders from lawsuits stemming from their flawed policies either. He doesn't protect battered wives and children within the organization. He doesn't protect Russian Jehovah's Witnesses from the police. He doesn't protect Jehovah's Witnesses out in service from dogs. So what exactly are we talking about here? And the same applies to the tender affection, because I spent 18 years of my life as a Jehovah's Witness, and I did not experience or observe tender affection at all. And before you say that I must have just been in a bad congregation, I was in three or four different congregations in two different states, so don't even try it. Look, y'all, this song is just deranged. And what's really disturbing about it is that it's been stuck in my head nonstop since I started working on this video earlier in the week, and it's really irritating. Brainwashing is very real, y'all, and it's really hard to undo. Now, keep in mind that I've been out for almost 20 years, two decades, and this stuff can still get to me. So I guess the lesson in there is if you're recently out, give yourself a break. It takes a long time to undo this stuff. So in 2009, this song was shortened from three verses to two. They cut out the second verse from 1984, which goes like this. Jesus Christ, our leader, is full control. That's good to know, I guess. Glad they told us. I mean, otherwise we would never have been able to tell. He grapes the soldiers that he doesn't throw. What? What kind of enrollment is he doing? And what is he equipping them with? What in the world is this about? Especially since everybody knows that Jehovah's Witnesses don't serve in the military. Oh, 
I see. Spiritual warfare. How convenient. These lines kind of make me think about lemmings and little sweaters for some reason. Or maybe they're just tiny suits of armor. We're all jumping off this cliff in unity. It's part of our spiritual warfare. Huzzah! Seriously, though, this is some of the most unlyrical songwriting I have ever heard. Okay, we're skipping the chorus because I don't want to get vomit on my computer. MacBooks are expensive. Then we have God's In 2009, this line was changed so that God provides his steward, which definitely does sound better. Now, I'm assuming that they're referring to the governing body when they say steward, and I find it very interesting that until 2009, the word steward was in quotation marks in the song. So what they seem to be saying here is that the governing body will guide Jehovah's Witnesses in their Christian course. What are they, taking night classes or something? So here's some trivia for you. Do you know what the active force is? If you're a normal Christian, probably not. It's the Holy Spirit. So Jehovah's Witnesses don't see the Holy Spirit as an entity in itself, and instead they just call it God's active force. So may we be Apparently, loyalty also requires incessant preaching if you're a Jehovah's Witness. But I'm wondering about the wise decrees. What wise decrees has God made, not just lately, but ever? I mean, the Bible isn't even directly from God, even if you believe in Christianity. It was still written by men. And since the Bible, there have been plenty of decrees made by various men and groups of men in the name of God, not a single one of them by the actual Creator Himself. Obviously, if you're a Jehovah's Witness, you would consider the decrees of the governing body to be God's decrees. But can their decrees really be considered wise? Well, let's find out. We'll look at a few. I'm quoting from their literature here. Golden Age, later known as the Awake, in October of 1921 said, Vaccination never prevented anything and never will and is the most barbarous practice. Hmm. Golden Age, 1931. Aluminum causes cancer. No, it doesn't. Watchtower, January 1964. Thus, if a Christian woman does not cry out and does not put forth every effort to flee, she would be viewed as consenting to the violation. Okay, this is talking about women who are in a rape situation. So apparently, if you are in a situation where a perpetrator has a gun to your head, says he's going to shoot you unless you submit. If you're a Jehovah's Witness and you do what the attacker says, they will judge you as consenting and having committed fornication if you're raped. I don't call that wise. At all. Anyway, moving on. Awake, May 1969. If you are a young person, you also need to face the fact that you will never grow old in this present system of things. Why not? Because all the evidence and fulfillment of Bible prophecy indicates that this corrupt system is due to end in a few years. Therefore, as a young person, you will never fulfill any career that this system offers. 1969. The year my mother graduated from high school. You know where my mother is right now? In a nursing home. In hospice care. And you, and you know who supports her financially? Me. The mentally diseased apostate. Not her beloved spiritual family or the organization that she is so devoutly loyal to. Me. Youth Book, 1976. Masturbation leads to homosexuality. Watchtower, July 2011. Apostates, or people who leave the Jehovah's Witnesses, are mentally diseased. Watchtower, November 2013. All of us must be ready to obey any instructions we may receive, whether these appear sound from a strategic or human standpoint or not. And then, of course, there are talks by governing body member Tony Morris III about how much Jehovah hates tight pants. And the statement they released in response to recent protests and lawsuits over child molestation, where they said that they will never change their practice of requiring two witnesses to an act of child abuse or other sin in order for it to be considered valid. Does any of this sound wise or even true to you? Is this really the best the Almighty can do?
I'm dying to know. I mean, this is just goofy and embarrassing and stupid. Why would anyone be expected to display their loyalty by proclaiming stuff like this? Why not focus on something important, like helping the homeless or the poor? What about volunteering, providing disaster relief, serving as foster parent, parents or guardians ad litem? Why not do things that actually make a difference? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because that would take time and money away from the Watchtower Society, which would mean the governing body might have to eat rice and beans occasionally instead of prime rib, and we, we really can't have that. Submission without suspicion, this to the orb we owe. Constant correction, no child protection, willful ignorance we 